you know what's really interesting when you look at Bruce Lee's short life, how much his physique improved so much, like when he was in Cato, and then yeah. when he got into you know the martial arts movies that he made in Hong Kong, especially Enter the Dragon, of course. But how his physique yeah. improved so much. So do you think that was a a, a direct result of him being interested in bodybuilding and, and buying the magazines and you know maybe doing art? Oh yeah, he he started buying the magazines in the uh, mid to late sixties. Strength and health, muscular development. Yeah, Joe's magazines, and he he clipped out articles by you know of training articles, Iron Man, and he had them in a I remember a gray folder. And really, I, I went through it once and made a list of what all the articles were. But yeah, he was he was in with both feet and bodybuilding. He thought bodybuilding was great. You know, and wow. he he he. It was never his goal, nor did he have the genetics to be huge. Yeah. Um, but, you know, because I remember uh, he was and another student of his were walking down in Santa Monica by the dungeon, the old gym. They called the dungeon down there. And some huge guy came out. I don't know who it was. Might have been Dave Draper. Yeah. And one on the beach, the right? Said, on Santa Monica Beach. Yeah. And the guy yeah. said, whoa, who see the size of that guy, Bruce? But he <laughs> said, yeah. You know, but, you know, is he is he powerful? I mean, can you use that quickly? Yeah. So his big thing was. Use it, getting the muscles stronger, but to use them in a practical way. I think the, the muscular development, he was proud of his physique, no question about it, but yeah. that was almost a side effect of his objective. He had tremendous lats, but he had those since he was a teenager. You know, hmm. Again, genetics. Uh, tiny waist. His forearms were bigger than his biceps by about one or two inches. Wow. <laughs> uh, and it, his abs were developed. It wasn't just that there was no body fat there and you could see his abs. There actually were, you talk about fiber density. He had the ridges. Yeah. Same with his pecs. He had pretty good pecs too. Yeah. Um, and then what happened when he went to Hong Kong was the humidity sweat out all the water, all the interstitial mm. water. Mm -hmm. And he, he wasn't eating as much. So he was like dieting. And then by the time Enter the dragon rolled around, he was, I've never, it was like a skinned cat. You know? Yeah. I've never <laughs> seen that kind of definition before. Right. Um, but he never, I mean, I think it is the most he weighed when he was, you know, taking his Bob Hoffman protein powder and pumping the iron three days a week. He was about 145. Yeah. Uh, by, the, by the time he made Enter the Dragon, because of the humidity and the choreography and all of this stuff, he was 120. Wow. So, 120. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Five, seven and a half, 120 pounds. Gee. But uh, insane power. Like uh, James Coburn, I remember... Uh, he and I were being, we were in a room waiting to go on. They were doing a documentary on Bruce and, and they were interviewing, you know, different people that were there. I think Van Williams from the Green Hornet was there yeah. and him and myself, cause I'd written a book and uh, we were talking or actually we weren't, we were talking, but not about that. When yeah. he went on camera, James Coburn revealed an anecdote where he said, Bruce had an 85 pound Everlast canvas punching bag hung in the backyard. Yeah. hung it in Coburn's backyard. He said, this is for you to work out on. And he said, I'll break it in for you. <laughs> and he said, Bruce hit it with a sidekick without running, just sidekick. He said, ripped a hole in the bag that big. He said, the <laughs> stuffing came out of it and it snapped the chain that was holding the bag. Holy the bag went out into the yard. <laughs> Bodybuilding Heroes and Legends Volume 1 by John Hansen is the book that celebrates the golden age of bodybuilding. This was the era in which legends such as Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sergio Oliva, Frank Zane, Robbie Robinson, Cal Skalak, and Mike Menser battled it out on stage for the biggest titles in bodybuilding. Read about some of the most exciting competitions that took place in the 1970s, including the Oliva-Schwarzenegger battles, Zane's first Olympia victory, and Scalac's controversial Mr. Olympia appearance, and much more. Filled with inspiring images of some of the greatest bodybuilders in the history of the sport, Bodybuilding Heroes and Legends Volume 1 is now available on Amazon.com or email John directly at naturalolympia at gmail.com.